Since not usually possible to use client's project for my video demonstrations, I've decided to use the multi-track project. Dare you to move a cover song by Fox Chase and original by Switchfoot to demonstrate and show you how I start my mixing session in Cakewalk by BandLab. The recorded multi-track session comes in 25 files, which includes the drum set, the bass, guitars, solo guitar, background vocals, and the lead vocals. I've simply selected them all and dragged them into my project. Since this multi-track project is already pre-processed, so you can practice mixing and learn how to mix a song, I found that the gain staging has already been done. There's very little gain staging to do for this recorded material. Of course, if you are doing the recording, or you receive the multi-track files and you check, make sure you do the gain staging. I have few videos on gain staging that you can watch. I will leave a link in the description so you can click and watch them and learn how to do gain staging. But for this project, no gain staging is required. These are all the tracks in the project. And this is how my console looks like. Ended up being 31 channels. As I mentioned, 25 of them are the actual audio tracks and few auxiliary tracks added in there. I've also done a simple balancing. That's why the faders look at different locations. And you may also see the pro channel open on some of the channels as well. Currently, there are no plugins built in or third party on any of the actual tracks. The pro channel you'll see, they are on auxiliary tracks. If you want to learn about different types of tracks, channels, and buses, auxiliary buses in Cakewalk by BandLab, again, I do have a comprehensive video you can watch. I will leave the link in the description. You can watch and you can later understand what I'm trying to show you here. So basically, all my drum tracks go into a new auxiliary bus called drums. And here, on my drums auxiliary bus, all I have is a compressor, the Pro Channel compressor, like the 1176 type compressor. That's the only one that's turned on. And my console emulator. You will notice that I have used console emulator on all of my auxiliary channels. The auxiliary channels are basically my drums channel, some sound effects channel, my bass, my guitars, background vocals, and vocals. As I mentioned earlier, because this multi-track project is already pre-processed to a certain degree, there's not much of plugins required other than grouped into auxiliary buses. Here in my bass, again, I'm using the 1176 type compressor, but for my guitars, I'm using the LA-2A type compressor. And for my background vocals, I'm using compressor, again, the emulator. But for my main vocals, I did a little bit of EQing before a little bit of compression, and then my console emulator. Now let's look at the buses. All of those auxiliary buses feed into buses here. This is where my mixing is going to actually happen. If you notice, all of my auxiliaries are on zero. Final balancing will be done here for the different instruments. In my bus section, again, as you can see, I've got my drums, my master bus, my drums, effects, bass, guitars, the guitar solo, some pads, background vocals, vocals. I have river, a river for the vocals, a separate river for the background vocals, and a delay. This is just my starting point. So I can have a little bit of river for the vocals and the background vocals and the guitar, the solo guitar, and a little bit of delay for the guitar. There are no automation or any other effect added at this stage. The reason I set up this way 
group them into auxiliaries on my channels, and then send the auxiliary buses into sub-buses gives me more flexibility and more control while I'm doing my mixing. I can do my automation on my auxiliary buses. That way, instead of automating the, all of the drums, or especially automation happens in guitars, so instead of automating each guitar separately, I can also automate the whole guitar section. If I want to apply sidechain compression for the guitars, so I can duck the guitars during the solo guitar, or if I need to duck the guitars when the vocals come in, during the chorus, and so on, I can control all of the guitar sections at the same time, where individual automation for each guitar, acoustic and electric guitar, can be automated independently of the group. And then final mixdown can happen at the bus section on the right. So basically, that's my workflow in setting up and starting a mix. So let's have a quick listen how far I've gone so far to make sure that I'm on the right track. Welcome to the planet Welcome to existence Everyone's here Everyone's here Everybody's watching you now Everybody waits for you now What happens next? Yeah, what happens next? I dare you to move I dare you to move I dare you to lift yourself up off the floor I dare you Okay, okay, one small lie. I did have a few plugins for the vocals, <laughs> other than the Pro Channel EQ and a little bit of compression. I do have the built in Sonatus compressor on the vocals, and I have two of them there. And if you haven't watched my video about vocal processing, you can, um, again, I will leave a link in the description. You can watch so you can understand in detail what I'm trying to do. But here you can actually see this is my first compressor. Just actually should move it there. Where it's taking care of all the peaks in the audio. So as the chorus comes in, it tames all of that high peaks. If we look at the waveform, of the vocals. Just let me bring it up. Let's just zoom in. As you can see, this vocal is quite dynamic, where this section here, it's quite low in volume and dynamics, and over here, it gets really loud. So what I'm trying to do is take care of these peaks by this first compressor. And then for the second compressor, which is this one here. That's more relaxed. It's got a little bit of knee, and that's pretty much smoothing out all of the other smaller peaks and balancing it. So the difference would be if I bypass those two compressors, and let's have a listen. Welcome to the planet. Welcome to existence. You will hear that in bypass mode, or in included mode, there is no change in the volume, there is no compression. Just have a listen. Welcome to the planet. 
very gentle compression here, like 0.3 dB gain reduction. Everyone's here. Everyone's here. So the compressors are not really working or doing anything, especially the first one. This is the first one there. Let me put them in the right order <laughs> to make more sense to you. So it goes through this one first and then this one. And there's a very tiny little bit of sort of uh, leveling that's happening with the second compressor until it reaches the peaks, which is here. As you can see right there, that is gain reduction of about 2 dB, getting rid of these peaks, and about 3 dB leveling it, smooth, smoothing it out. So the difference between the lower relaxed singing and the louder parts are more leveled. Let me bypass it again. As you can hear, when it goes like to take, and it's really get distorted because that's already um, too high for the level. So by having these two compressors in, really levels your vocals. I highly recommend you watch my video on vocal processing, and you will understand all the different, comp what these two compressors are actually doing. Well, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure you give me the thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. I'll catch you in the next one.